In our past video, we talked about how we went from our schematic and we took all the information that was in our schematic and we transferred it onto our PCB or printed circuit board layout program. We also talked about how we changed some of the default settings that the computer program had uh, to create more useful settings that we actually will need when we're making our circuit board. So please watch that past video if you haven't seen it and just follow along that video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how we're going to take this uh, and turn it into a useful circuit board with traces. What this program did is it looked at your schematic and it looked at what components were connected to what components and it took all of that information and connected the various components for you. So for example, here is our LM386 and the very first pin is connected to this 10k ohm resistor. It took all of that information and it translated it into the beginning of our circuit boards. It took our LM386, which is highlighted teal right now, and it translated this centipede symbol into the footprint of the LM386. So that if you look here, these are the individual pads that you would solder the LM386 or that centipede looking thing into your circuit. And as you can see, the first pin connected to the 10k ohm resistor, that 10k ohm resistor, which is highlighted in teal right now over here, that is connected. The program has two ways of telling you that something is connected. The first is it tells you that something is connected by that little blue line that connects the R1 from this end to the first pin of the LM386 on this end. The other way that the computer program tells you that something is connected is that when you highlight a pad, any, pa any other pad that it's connected to glows red. So as you can see, the circle glows red and the square or the first pin on the LM386 glows red as well, which tells you that it's connected. If we go back onto our schematic, especially on the negative part of the battery, there are a lot of different things that are connected to that negative point on the battery. So if we go and find our battery, so let's find our battery. Uh, here it is, it's highlighted in teal. There's our battery. And if we zoom in, the positive is the circle, the negative is the square. If we just hover our mouse over the square, you will see there are a lot of different components right now that are glowing red. So essentially what that's telling you is that any other component that glows red could be connected to each other. So to interact with your various components, if you wanted to select this resistor, for example, you can left click, hold, and drag it to move it around. And as you do so, the little blue lines that remind you that it's connected travel with it. You can always also left click and press R to rotate it. Now the blue lines are just little reminders. You'll actually need to physically connect them with copper traces or brown lines. And so for you to do that, go over to uh, route manual, which is right up here, left click it. And your goal is to connect all the reds that glow with the red ones. I've got a glowing red rectangle. I need to connect that to that glowing red circle. So left click, and then now I can start to place my wires and I can connect it to the circle and left click to drop it. And now, as you can see, they are connected by a brown line or a copper trace. Now to exit trace mode and to return back to the mouse, you can either right click or press this uh, mouse button. That allows me to go back to moving and dragging various components. As I mentioned, your goal is to make sure that everything that is connected is actually connected. And equally as important, you need to make sure that everything that should not be connected isn't accidentally connected. Another way to think about it is that everything that glows red should be connected to each other. So red should always go to red, but you should be careful not to accidentally connect the red stuff with the brown stuff. 
you should not take a component and place it directly on top of another component. That's a bad idea. And lastly, you want to plan carefully so that brown lines don't accidentally cross over other brown lines or other components. So I'll give you a good example. I'm supposed to connect this, this red rectangle with this red rectangle. So one thing that you should avoid is if you left click, you do not want to just do a straight line all the way down. And in fact, the computer is warning you not to do that because you can see two red circles emerge. What those red circles are telling you is that it's saying that something that should not be connected will be connected. So if I did this, in trying to connect these two reds together, I've bridged over the brown rectangle in the middle. That's bad, and that's a big boo-boo. To get rid of that, you can left-click that trace that you just drew, and then press Delete, and that will get rid of it. In this case, if I wanted to connect this to this, I would left-click, get the wire to go here a little bit, left-click to place it, and if I were to drag that all the way down, you'll see that an angry red circle will appear. So what I'll do is I'll bring it back down, I'll left click to lock that in place, and then I will left click again. And now I have connected these two red rectangles without inadvertently connecting this one in the middle. If you wanna change this later, you can always left click that trace and drag, and you can make it smaller or you could make it bigger, but I'm happy with it right now as it is. I'll show you another cool design trick. If I, as you can see here, I need to connect this circle to this square, so I will left click. I can left click down here to, and then left click to bring it down. And a cool design trick is to enter the cursor mode and I can highlight that corner over there, left click, hold it and drag it and I can make a 45 degree angle or I could bring that closer together like this. Of course, if you don't like it, you can always left click that trace and delete it. The last thing that you'll want to consider is you want to make your circuit board as small and compact as possible. So while I could connect this to here, this makes a really, really large circuit board which consumes a lot of copper and requires you to make a bigger case for your project. At this point, I've shown you how to connect the various components together using the manual route option. And if you're feeling confident or up to a challenge, you can start rearranging your components and start to connect them in your own way. Uh, however, if you're feeling unconfident and you're just learning the ropes, keep watching and you can just copy me uh, and copy my circuit board design. All right, so uh, I put on this resistor over here. I can see that C1, this oval is connected to this circle, and this one is gonna go to the rectangle down here. So what I might do is I'll rotate it, R, R, and I will left click this and connect it to here, and I'll exit trace mode by right clicking. Now this, red oval goes to this rectangle over here. Now one of the things that comes from experience is that while I could just left click and put a trace down like this, and while I could do that, I can foresee that I'm going to run into a few problems into the future because there's going to be some stuff like this battery that's going to need to be over here. So to make my life easier, I'm gonna get rid of this trace by hitting delete. And the blue line still reminds me that I need to connect that from there to there. So what I'll do is I will connect here. I'll left click. And I will actually loop down this way. Left click. And left click. And that allows future components to be over here. And it allows things to be a lot less crowded. Now we'll move on to pin number two, and yikes, that's a lot of different red things that are connected to each other. But that's okay, um, we'll just work at this one component at a time. And so for this one, 
I could actually take any of these components with the glowing red and move it next to pin number two over here. I'm gonna take resistor number two and I'll just move it closer there. So as we can see with this resistor, it can go into either of those brown rectangles and this one has to go to this rectangle. So I will create a trace, connect pin three to that circle there and I'll connect pin two. I'm gonna left click, left click, and left click. I'm gonna exit, all right? Let's take U2, which is the audio input. And let's connect this to the circuit. Now we can see that the circle over here is supposed to go to the square, and this circle is supposed to go to the circle. If I were to connect them just like this, they would crisscross, and that would be bad. So I'm just gonna rotate it. Rotate, rotate. And now you can see this can go down here and this one can go down here. So I'll take my trace. Now I'm going to right click. All right, with, our, with U2 done, let's move on to B1, which is our battery. So we'll bring it closer. Let's see what needs to be connected. The circle over here needs to be connected with the rectangle on this end. That'll be a bit of a challenge. And this square can connect to anything that's glowing red. So what I'll do is I'm gonna rotate it and put this up here. I'll take my trace. I'll connect this square. Now I can either connect the square with the circle or I can connect it with this square over here. That's my choice. I'll just connect it with the circle. Next. I'm gonna take the trace and connect this one all the way around to here. As you can see, I wish that I could simply just cut across, but you can see all the angry red lines. So I'll left click, left click, left click, and left click. I'm going to right click to enter cursor mode. And just to save on some room over here, I can take this component and drag it a little bit closer. One of the reasons why I was able just to take the circle and connect it all the way up like this was because nothing is connected to pin eight or pin seven. All right, let's work on LS1. The square can go to any of these red pads. The circle needs to go to capacitor down there. So I'll just connect square to square and I will right click to get rid of that. And now capacitor. So for C3, the square goes to circle and oval needs to connect all the way to either the oval up here, which isn't gonna happen because I would cross over or the oval can connect to the rectangle. So I'm gonna go the rectangle route. I'm going to rotate and rotate. And I'm going to left click. And I will put the two together. I'm going to create a trace. And I'm going to connect this up to here. Right click. Now as I'm looking in retrospect, I need to fit the resistor in there because that also needs to connect to the resistor. So what I might do is I might actually delete this trace. To do that, I'm gonna left click, press delete. I'm going to move that R3 resistor over here because that oval can connect to the circle. So I'll add a trace and add a trace, right click. This end needs to connect to C4, which is this little capacitor. So uh, I'll take the last components and I'll just drag them all the way up first. Drag and drag. Got this component over here. And I will left click C4 and I'm gonna rotate it. And I'm gonna rotate it again. Circle connects to oval. I'm gonna exit trace mode by right clicking. So I will left click C2. And I'm going to rotate and rotate. And I'm going to move 
this capacitor a little bit closer so we can save on some room. I'm going to left click C4, left click and left click to connect that to C2, with that rectangle there. So our last step is to connect this oval to either the rectangle or the circle. So I will left click the place a trace, left click the oval, I'll left click to place the pad. And what I'll do is I'll actually just connect it to the wire over here. And you know I can do that because the entire wire is glowing red. So I'll left click that. Now at this point it feels like I'm done, but I actually want to take some time to proofread. And the very first thing that you want to do when proofreading is to make sure that there aren't any little blue connector lines left. Because if, if there are blue connector lines left, it means that there are parts that need to be connected that you have not yet connected. So I see two lines over here, so I got to go fix that. Let's take a look. This oval needs to be connected, if I follow that blue line, to this square over here. And the square is connected to all of these things over here. So what I could do is just connect this rectangle to this oval. So I will connect this rectangle to this oval. And my computer program is happy because that blue line has now disappeared. So this one's going to be tricky because I need to connect this oval with either this rectangle, which is locked in here, or I'll have to connect this oval to this oval, which is in here. So to solve this problem, I'm going to try to sneak a line through here, through here, and then all the way down through here. So to do that, I might drag and space this out to give myself a little bit more space. I'm going to shrink this or turn this into a 45. So I'm going to left click and drag to make this a 45. So that gives me a little bit more room to snake that trace across. I'm going to select the trace. And instead, I'm going to click the middle of this wire. I'm going to left click. I'm going to left click on the 45. Bring that up here, left click. Left click, left click to bring it down, left click to place it, and left click to move up. And you know you've done a good job because that blue line that connected the two are now gone. So the first phase of proofreading, which is making sure everything that's supposed to be connected is taken care of. The last stage is to see if we could put things closer together to shrink them up to save on some room. One of the things I can do is I can uh, turn this into a 45. So I'm going to left click that corner and drag down. That's a 45 there. I'm going to left click this corner, turn that into a 45 as well. Shift this a little bit closer. I'm going to turn this into a 45. And then finally, you want to place your mounting holes. So to do that, there is an option for mounting hole. Left click that. Just drop it and then there's a little mounting hole there and you usually need at least two so i'm going to put my last mounting hole over here and at this point my circuit is done if you want to figure out how big your circuit is in real life you can go to file and you can go to print preview and you there's your a4 sheet of paper that's how big your circuit is and finally the most important step is to save your file, click save, give it the following name, start by having your last name, followed by monobox. Go ahead and hit save. Okay, so to submit your assignment, go onto your Microsoft Teams, find your course with Mr. Rao, open it up, go to the assignments tab, find assignment three, learn dip trace to make a printed circuit board, and we'll take you to the assignment instructions. Click Add Work. Go and find where you have your PCB file, which is over here. Click Open. Your file should be a .dip file. And again, it should have your last name followed by Monobox. And then when you're done, hit Done. You know you've done a good job when you can see the .dip file right down here. And then finally, hit Turn In and wait for that fun animation. Thanks for watching and happy circuit board making.